In the early hours of June the 24th of 2022, Philadelphia man James Simi Lambert Jr. was walking across Cecil B. Moore Avenue when he was ambushed by a group of teenagers. Without warning or provocation, harrowing surveillance footage from the attack showed Lambert initially trying to walk away from the group, which consisted of three females and four males in their early to mid-teens. One of them later identified as Richard Jones, then grabbed a traffic cone, came up behind Lambert and struck him in the head. The 73-year-old man collapsed on the sidewalk. Emboldened by Jones' attack, another teen, Gamara Mosley, picked up the cone and threw it into Lambert as he curled up on the pavement. Lambert got up and staggered down the sidewalk, at which point Mosley chased after him with the cone, raised it above her shoulders and forcefully slammed it against his head. The teens were seen laughing and egging each other on throughout the clip. Lambert suffered devastating injuries to which he succumbed in a hospital the following day. The Philadelphia Police Department released the video, along with a $20,000 reward for information leading to the assailant's capture. Richard Jones and Gamara Mosley surrendered to the authorities in the aftermath. As of the latest available information on the case, they were charged as adults with third-degree murder and conspiracy. Number 6. Peyton Collier, William Bell Ronnie Lang Jr. and Ashley Eselborn. 23-year-old Wichita Falls man Zachary Wood was murdered in May of 2022 in what Texas law enforcement described as a massive bloodletting event. The incident occurred at a time when Wood was at a Brown Street home with 27-year-old Peyton Collier and her boyfriend Ronnie Lang Jr. Also present were 21-year-old Ashley Esselborn and her boyfriend William Bell. A fight erupted on May the 21st after Collier and Esselborn, who at the time worked as a Hooters waitress, accused Wood of stealing drugs and money from them while they'd been sleeping. 18-year-old Lang led the group in a vicious attack on Wood that resulted in him being punched, stomped and struck with a baseball bat and a handgun. The relentless pummeling resulted in Wood's death and his body was found by the police responding to a welfare check at around noon on May the 21st. The group was arrested a few days later on charges of first-degree felony murder. During her police interviews, Esselborn denied taking part in a fatal beating but admitted that she'd cheered the others on as they were assaulting Wood while demanding to know the whereabouts of her stolen property. She also confessed to helping dispose of bloodied items in the aftermath. Her stated degree of involvement was confirmed by Collier. As of December of 2022, Lang was given a 50-year sentence after pleading guilty to Wood's murder in September. Bell was bailed out while Collier remained jailed. Esselborn, whose bail had been reduced from $1 million to $100,000, asked a judge to further cut it down to $50,000, arguing that she'd be able to pay it from the money she'd made working as an OnlyFans model. Her request was denied. Number 5. Buffalo Kia Challenge Four American teenagers died in a car crash in late October of 2022 in an incident that the authorities reported was linked to a TikTok trend called the Kia Challenge. It consisted of viral videos teaching users how to break into Kia or Hyundai vehicles, remove the ignition cover, and then hotwire them using a USB cord and a screwdriver. Based on what they'd learned from the trend, a group of six teenagers stole a Kia Sportage in Buffalo, New York on October 23rd. During the joy ride, the vehicle violently crashed on Route 33. The driver, Julian Armstead, remained trapped inside the Kia as his five companions were forcefully ejected. Only one of the teens that had been launched into the street survived. After she was initially reported as being in critical condition, the deceased were identified as Marcus Webster, Swazine Swindle, Kevin Payne, and Ajani Harper, who had recently become a mother. On December the 9th of 2022, a judge ruled that Armstead would remain in adult court for charges that included four counts of manslaughter in the second degree, one count of assault in the first degree, and one count of criminal possession of stolen property. Number 4. Shania McNeil Australian woman Shania McNeil was driving from a club in Sydney's Western, heading to a friend's house about a half an hour past midnight on April the 28th of 2019. McNeil's friends, Hazel Wildman and Fader Hunter were passengers in her pink Suzuki and had recorded her on Snapchat while she was purposefully driving on the wrong side of the road. As music was blaring in the car, the disturbing video showed them seemingly encouraging 21-year-old McNeil as she was playing chicken with oncoming cars. It would later be determined that McNeil was two times over the alcohol limit while also having MDMA and cannabis in her system. At around 1.10am, while driving recklessly through Berkshire Park, 
She crashed head on into a Nissan Micra. The collision obliterated the front sides of both vehicles and McNeil suffered massive internal injuries. She died before paramedics arrived at the scene. Inside the Micra were musicians, Dennis Sales and Ken Morrow, who'd been driving home from a gig at Riverstone RSL. Bystanders pulled them from the wreck along with the Suzuki's occupants. Morrow was later released with a shattered wrist, while Sales, a father of three, was placed in a coma for two days but eventually recovered. Wildman and Hunter were heavily criticized for sharing a selfie from the hospital that showed them wearing neck braces after their friend had just died. In a subsequent interview, the women, both in their early 20s at the time, denied knowing that McNeil had succumbed to her injuries at the time of uploading the photo. Wildman told a media outlet, she just looked like she was sleeping and happy sleeping. She looked beautiful on the outside. In the same interview, Hunter admitted that they'd encouraged McNeil before it started to get scary. Number three, Sarah Platt. British teenager Sarah Platt and her friends tried the Skull Breaker Challenge, a trend popularized on TikTok in February of 2020. It involved three people jumping in a line with those on each side, kicking the legs out from the person in the middle, thus causing them to fall on their back. The momentum typically resulted in the back of their head whipping back into the surface on which they landed. Platt would later remember that she initially didn't want to take part in the stunt, fearing she'd get hurt, but eventually gave in to peer pressure while at a sporting event with her friends. As they kicked Platt's legs out, she landed awkwardly on her neck and soon started losing feeling in her right leg. She was rushed to the hospital where doctors found that she'd broken three bones in her neck and her T5 vertebrae. Platt's mother shared footage of the moment when the injury occurred as well as a photo of her daughter lying flat with a brace on her head and neck as a warning to other parents. A few years after the injury in the summer of 2022, Platt herself urged others not to try viral challenges. Although the 18-year-old had largely overcome the mobility issues stemming from her injury, she reported that she still suffered complications. One of them was in the form of postural tachycardia syndrome, which caused her to faint. Today's topic was requested by Super Meh, Calvin C, and P Calls. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number two, Ashley Hughes. While at his residence, at the University of Lincoln, in December of 2014, English teenager Ashley Hughes decided to experiment with MDMA. The freshman was 13 weeks into his studies after leaving his family home near Stockport in Cheshire. As reported by his mother, Hughes didn't drink or smoke and was innocent-minded. She reportedly read messages from the 19-year-old's phone, in his own words, saying that he was being peer pressured into trying drugs. Hughes and his friend 19-year-old Luke Green pulled their cash along with another unnamed student. Green then bought eight pills from fellow freshman, Rhys Bilal, who in turn was supplied by final year student Hayden Watson, aged 21. By all accounts, Hughes was very inexperienced with drugs. On the evening of December the 16th, he took two pills at once, unaware that they had a purity of 40%, meaning they were roughly twice as strong as the drugs typically found on the street. A few hours later, he started overheating and displaying signs of distress. Friends took him outside and tried to lower his temperature with cold showers. In the early hours of December the 17th, Hughes collapsed in the shower. He was taken to the county hospital, but doctors were unable to save him with the cause of death, subsequently listed as overdose. Green, Bilal, and Watson were labeled monsters by Hughes' mother in the aftermath for what she'd perceived as them preying on her son. They were given sentences ranging from 12 months to three years after they'd each admitted to being involved in procuring the fatal MDMA. Number one, Sean Mullen. In the fall of 2022, English businessman Sean Mullen, aged 49, traveled for work to Burton-upon-Trent in Staffordshire. After he'd gone out for dinner and drinks with his colleagues, on September the 23rd, Mullen headed back to his hotel but got lost after taking a wrong turn. At around 2.30 a.m., he spotted a group of youths in a car park off the high street and asked them for directions. One from the group, which reportedly consisted of three young men and three young women, came at Mollum from behind and floored him with a powerful blow. After the father of two had collapsed, the others joined in the attack. 
and proceeded to repeatedly stomp and kick him in the head until he became unconscious. They then left him for dead and drove off. Although he'd been badly hurt, Mullen was able to regain his composure enough to reach his colleagues, who then rushed him to the hospital. Among other injuries, Mullen's jaw, eye socket and cheekbone had been shattered. The York man needed reconstructive surgery in the form of pins and metal plates inserted in his face to mend the damage. As for his mental state, Mullen's wife reported that the brutal beating had left him a broken man. He wouldn't leave the house, had flashbacks, was scared of noises and flinched whenever someone touched him, including his children. Mullen decided to share his story in October of 2022, hoping that it would help the authorities find his attackers. Thanks for watching. Suppose they were both real, would you rather take part in Squid Game or The Hunger Games? Let us know in the comments section below.